Hi everyone, it's Sue here and I'm going to be your professor for HLSC 3601 Interprofessional Practice and I hope over the next 15 or 20 minutes or so to have an opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about the course and what you can expect in this first week as we just take a, uh, a sort of a slow runway into um, learning about how we can work with other um, health disciplines, how we can learn with other um, health professionals and about other health professionals. So it's my pleasure to begin um, the next 11 weeks of this exciting term with you and I hope you will find this a great learning experience and I promise to do my very best to ensure that I um, meet your learning needs and look forward to hearing from you uh, to ensure that I am doing my best for you. So let's start with a little bit about me. That's me. You see me over on the right there. That's me. I'm Sue. And right beside me is my two and a half year old daughter, Kate. And right beside her is my eight year old daughter, Colleen. And we're all um, smiling and have um, uh, um, our tummies full and our eyes are big and wide because we have just discovered a new ice cream place that's not too far from us. It's called, um, I'm going to say it badly, but it's a French name, Chocolat Favori. And it is uh, remarkable, and so I've now put it on my forbidden list because it's just too decadent for words. And so that was our first and hopefully our last visit there. Uh, what else can I tell you about myself? I was about to move on to the next slide. That's all you need to know. I love ice cream. Um, I've been an RN for 30 years. Hard to believe that it's 30 years. My first and uh, last passion in nursing always will be emergency nursing. That's where I've done most of my clinical work, both here in Canada and in the United States, in both community hospitals and shock trauma. And um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss emergency nursing. For the last 17 years or so, I've been a professor both at York University and since 2009 at UOIT. And um, it is um, just an incredibly joyful opportunity for me to talk about nursing and to be with other nurses like yourself. Um, I love working with both collaborative students and with the bridging students, and I hope that this is a great experience for me to learn from you, as I hope that I have some things that you can learn from me as well. Um, my passions include high acuity nursing as well as interprofessional practice and you'll note that the textbook for this course is one that is co-authored and co-edited by myself and my colleague Charles Annie and we've been partners in in crime for uh, the last decade or so and um, wrote this book not because we thought oh we know so much about interprofessional practice but actually because we knew it was so essential that there be some kind of book that really provided the foundation for interprofessional practice and really talked about what it actually is and how we can accomplish it effectively. So let's talk a little bit about the course. Um, this course really builds on this idea that all of us work in teams and in particular in healthcare we work in teams but across other kinds of sectors people work um, collaboratively and we know that in all kinds of jobs and all kinds of careers the more you're able to work effectively within a team the more productive you are the better your outcomes are and the higher level service uh, you provide for clients in healthcare that's critical because that means life or death often uh, certainly it means um, uh, satisfaction for healthcare providers and we'll talk about that as we get into the course so in this course, we'll talk about issues like empowerment, team building, motivation, diversity, conflict management, and communication. Oh my gosh, those are going to be so exciting. And I'm looking forward to talking about all of them with you. Okay. Um, when you complete the course, these are the, the course objectives. You will be able to easily debate the strengths and weaknesses of interprofessional uh, collaboration. You'll be able to really talk about your own personal and professional values associated with, with uh, team-based practice. Uh, you will be able to talk about, and not only that, demonstrate really highly effective communication and negotiation skills. And I know for you, Bridgers, you really possess high-level skills. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can continue to build on that. We're going to talk about conflict resolution in the course, and that's going to be really important, uh, and also positive team functioning. And in healthcare settings, you know, I think for all of us, we can admit that it can be a really tough gig. And so the more we talk about how to work positively together, uh, the more we're likely to be able to do that. We are going to talk about how we can empower and influence others uh, in this process of collaboration and developing um, an approach to working together that we call colleagueship or becoming colleagues with each other. We're going to talk about the various um, influences of our own values, our professional values and beliefs, as well as our own personal values and beliefs and codes of ethics. We're going to talk about quality improvement and what that means and how we measure positive outcomes. 
and we're going to um, look at um, performance management uh, affecting ourselves and affecting others. So how is that going to um, work out over the course of the next 11 weeks? Week by week, we're going to go through the various topics and we're going to build week by week. So here are the first four weeks. We look at week one. Um, I've decided that we're really going to take a slow start. And the reason I'm doing this is very purposeful. I find that if we jump right into the course and we don't spend a little bit of time just learning to navigate the site and where we find things and figuring out who we're working with and how that working is going to take place, by week three or four, I'm hearing from students who have already sort of lost the track of what we're supposed to be doing or that have developed, haven't, fit, haven't yet developed the pattern for how the postings go or how you work in small groups or large groups. So if you can bear with me, I'm going to just have us take a little bit of a slower start to week one. And the focus is not going to be on content yet, but really much more a focus on how you find everything in the course, understanding what all the assignments look like, understanding what your requirements will be around posting and working with your small and large group. Then in week two, we're finally going to get right to the meat of it. What is inter inter uh, interprofessional practice? What are the various dimensions of it? And you'll see the readings are listed there and the dates. Um, we're going to look in week three at some various uh, frameworks for interprofessional practice. There's one that's in our textbook, chapter two. Uh, Charles and I have written that. There's also a national interprofessional competency framework, and we'll talk about both of those. The readings are, again, listed here, and there is a link to the national interprofessional competency framework. And then by week four, we're going to start looking at the foundations of interprofessional practice. And in, in week four, there's two that we're going to look at. The first is teams and teamwork. We're really going to you know, do a deep dive and look at teams and teamwork and what that's all about. Um, and we're going to also talk about the various um, roles, professional roles, and how relationships in professional settings come together. Week five, we're going to carry on understanding um, how those foundations for interprofessional practice um, are essential and how we build towards stronger uh, uh, professional practice. And here we're looking at um, collaboration, what collaboration looks like and how we ensure that we have healthy collaboration happening. By week six, we're really getting to the nitty gritty. And this is, I think, one of the most important weeks where we're looking at problem solving, conflict resolution, and negotiation. And mercifully, the following week is break week. So all of us will have a little bit of a break uh, and a breather. And I'm sure for you, it'll be unfortunately a week of um, courses, uh, um, catching you're, you catching yourself up with your various courses. But February 18th to 22nd is where there's a break week and no classes. Week seven, the, the week that uh, follows your break week, you'll come back and have a midterm test. And you'll notice from this um, table that that test is going to be on campus. It's in a scheduled time and it's tentatively booked for 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on February 28th. Um, and that is a day that you should be on campus anyways. And that seems to be the date we're most likely to be able to book a room. And I will confirm with you both the time and the location as soon as I have a room booking back. So that's your midterm test. It's worth 35% of your grade, so it's fairly heavily weighted, and that will be all multiple choice. It will be a combination of um, uh, content questions, application questions, critical thinking questions, and synthesis questions, and that's because that's what you're gonna see on the NCLEX exam. Um, each week, I will try to give you some sample kinds of questions, just some idea of a kind of question that might come out of the readings that we've had or the discussion that we've had that week. In week eight, we're gonna carry on with foundations of interprofessional practice and actually wrap up those foundational concepts and that we're gonna talk about leadership. You'll have an entire course in leadership eventually, but to start, it's important that we really just um, uh, scratch the surface at least in understanding how leadership is essential in interprofessional practice and part of how you're um, negotiating within your small group and taking a leadership role once over the course of the term in, in creating a posting from your whole group will be uh, an important insight into leadership within uh, team settings. We also, in week eight, move on to issues in interprofessional practice. And here we're gonna talk about interprofessional education, a really critical focus for developing interprofessional practice skills. And we're gonna talk about it there in week eight. Moving on in week nine, we're going to um, talk about interprofessional healthcare policy and regulation. Now, I just am going to warn you, that that is a little bit of a dry week. I will do my very best to make it interesting for you, but it's a little bit of a dry week. But hang in there because it is so very important for your own practice. So week nine, uh, chapter nine, interprofessional healthcare policy and regulate. By week 10, we're gonna carry on with issues. And here we're looking at practice outcomes and measuring success. Remember we talked about what is the point of uh, engaging in interprofessional practice? 
if we don't know that there are positive outcomes, both for the um, healthcare system and the um, recipient of care, so clients, but also for the service provider, for ourselves. What are the positive outcomes for ourselves? And we'll do that on March 21st, week 10. Week 11, we're not going to add new content because in week 11, you've got another assignment. Due. So if you remember that right after break week, you had your midterm test with 35%. In week 11, you're going to submit to me, and I'll go over all of these in this upcoming slides, but you're going to submit to me a reflective analysis, uh, four to five pages long, that is going to focus on your contribution to the community of learning. So rather than get a little grade every week for your postings, whether you post to the large group, you post within your small group, or uh, you do various activities, you're actually um, getting a grade over the course of the entire term for how you've contributed to your own learning, but to the learning of the class. So you're, this is a, a community in which we are all learning together and you will get a grade that's very heavily weighted. 25% of your course grade is actually for that participation through all these different mechanisms. And so you will write a reflective analysis that looks at those different uh, components of the grade and you will provide me with um, examples of the work that you did in those po in the various postings or your discussions within your groups to show how um, that there is support for um, what you're saying that you did in the grade that you think you should get. By week 12, we come back into the course with the last week of content as we move right into uh, future directions and how we move beyond interprofessional practice to what's called intersectoral pr practice. And that's how, um, uh, different sectors come together. So for example, how do healthcare and housing have uh, implications for each other? How do we work together? How do healthcare and um, uh, legal services work together or healthcare and the police? How does uh, healthcare and government work together? So those different sectors, how do they work together and why is that collaboration so essential? You're going to have a final exam in the exam period and that's gonna be the wrap up of all of the components of your grade. So I try to keep the components fairly straightforward. There's three things midterm exam, a final exam, both of the multiple choice, and then a um, contribution to the community of learning reflective analysis paper, but that the paper is part of the grade, the, actually the depth of your reflective analysis I'll be grading, but also it really just lays out all of the work that you've done in participating through the course uh, week by week through your online postings. So let's talk a little bit more about those uh, assignments again. So contribution to the community of learning. You will be, over the course of the, um, the um, term, participating in both small group work. So each one of you will be placed in a small group, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but you'll be placed in a small group of five, and within that group of five, sometimes the requirement will be that you post within your small group, you talk to each other, let's say in week one, it's about really getting to know the other members of your small group, I, if you imagine getting to know the nurses on your shift. Um, and so that the, the components there would be small group postings. Sometimes you will be uh, posting to the larger group um, five times over the term. The small, each of the small groups will be posting a summary or a synthesis posting. And in that, uh, each of you will take a leadership role. So if there is a, you're all in groups of five, Five times over the term, your group will post. That means each one of you will have a chance once in the term to be the leader of your small group in bringing together the ideas of all of your group members into a common posting on the large group. So that you'll see that the large group postings should be fairly straightforward, that it's not gonna be hundreds of posts within the large group. When we have the large group discussion board active, there will just be 10 posts on those weeks where we're doing large group posting, they will represent a posting from each of the small groups, and it will be the leader assigned to that week within each of the small groups who will be uh, required to bring together the ideas of, the, um, of that entire small group in a common posting. I'll talk about that just a bit more in a minute. You also have those two tests, a midterm test and a final test, the midterm test, uh, tentatively scheduled for February 28th, we're 35% and it covers weeks one to six of the course. Your final exam has to be cumulative. I know students would like me to say it only covers weeks seven to 12 and I would like to be able to say that, but it, um, it doesn't make sense. The ideas cross over from weeks one to six and I can't, if I said it was only in weeks seven to 12, I, I couldn't make sense of some of the later concepts that don't without referring to earlier ideas. So it is mostly weighted in weeks seven to 12 
but there, there may be reference to ideas and concepts earlier in the course. That will also be multiple choice with 40%. And then the, the um, written assignment in week 11. So let's talk just a little bit uh, more about this contribution to the community of learning, because I bet you're all thinking, what does that mean? So in the course, you will be posting in a variety of ways. You will be posting in a small group. Now remember I said each of you will be placed in a small group of five learners. It, so there will be 10 small groups in our course. So within those 10 small groups, sometimes your job will just be to talk with the other members in your small group. So you'll find your small group discussion board and you will respond to the um, discussion that's happening in the small group discussion board. Five times in the term, you will be posting to the large group discussion board as the, uh, and, and you'll be doing that on behalf of, a, of your small group. And you will one time of those five be the leader for your group. So each one of the group members will be a leader once and you will post a summary of all of your small group members ideas or responses to the discussion topic for everyone to read. Individuals will also respond individually to those 10 different group postings, um, bringing in literature, uh, providing a substantive response. On week 11, you will provide me with a reflective analysis paper that really looks at how you um, uh, participate, how you took part in the community of learning that we develop in this course. And so you'll provide uh, some reflective analysis of your uh, behavior, your participation through the course. And you'll also provide me with, a, as an appendix behind your document, uh, examples to support the, the um, statements that you're making about how you participate. We'll recommend what grade you think you should get uh, for your participation out of that 25% and you'll see on the next slide a rubric and you'll talk about both your individual postings and the um, small group work and your uh, leadership within your small group to do your one-time um, large group posting on behalf of your small group and also your membership within the group and how you supported the leaders on those other four weeks um, and so let's look at what um, what that grading rubric looks like. So there are five different components to that um, grade out of 25%. The quality of your written analysis. Now some students can do it in as little as three pages. I would say typically you require the full four pages up to five pages is fine. Um, and that really looks at your contribution to the community of learning and your analysis really of your participation and how it impacted others and there are the criteria you'll see. Five more marks out of that 25. Uh, are about the grade that you're recommending your, for yourself, for your participation, and your analysis and your insight into how that uh, participation translates into that evaluation. So really, how are you bringing together um, what you did over the course of the term, up to week 11 when you submit that assignment, and what that means in terms of evaluating your own um, participation. Five more marks are around enacting leadership. Remember, you get to be the leader of your small group once out of those five postings one time, you will be the leader for a small group posting that then posts in the large group discussion board. And you are going to um, um, provide some uh, evidence of how you were effective or not effective as a team leader. You're also going to um, respond to understanding how you were effective or not effective as a follower. So in all of those other weeks, when you were, it's, it, when you're working in a team, it's as important to be a leader as it is to be a follower. So in those weeks where you're supporting the leader of the, of the group, how are you doing that? Of your small group, how are you doing that? Are you meeting your deadlines? Are you supporting the development of the work? Are you being um, um, an effective team member? And so you'll see the criteria there. And then finally, substantive engagement. If you read the uh, criteria within the course rubrics, it's really important to understand that when you're replying to posts, um, a post that says, great work, I really agree with what you've said, or what an interesting post, that's not really substantive. It's nice and it's uh, supportive, but it doesn't move the thinking forward. So a substantive post needs to be thoughtful. It needs to bring in uh, literature. It needs to um, uh, potentially bring in personal experiences, but move the ideas and the dialogue forward in a much more substantive way. And so 
uh, this is the rubric that will be associated with the participation grade that comes through that analysis of your contribution. And so here, this is when I've been talking about substantive, what does that mean? So substantive really is a posting that states your position. You're gonna uh, um, cite supporting or refuting evidence, and that could be in the literature or it could be your own experiences. Um, you're gonna use a minimum of two scholarly references typically as you do the quote. You're gonna make connections between your own experiences, your own thinking, your own um, uh, readings, the opinions of others, and you're gonna highlight where that you see uh, relationships or patterns between these various ideas. You're also gonna promote or support um, the thinking and dialogue of others. Um, a substantive response, again, is not that I agree your great work. It really is much deeper, um, and it really is important that it, uh, that it provides evidence of your own thinking and your own ability to pull those ideas forward. So let's talk about individual and group postings. And I know, I, I, I know that you would prefer to self-select into groups. And if this was any other course, I would never place you in a group. But this is the interprofessional course, and so it doesn't make sense. It is essential that I place you in a group. And so I'm sorry if that's not convenient for you or not comfortable to start. I have been teaching this course for a long time, and it really just doesn't make sense to do it any other way. So you'll be placed into small groups, and it really it's just important to think of it as the same way as you walk onto, a, onto your unit and you can work with any different nurse who's working that shift. Um, this, that's how it's going to be when you're working with your small group. So you'll be placed in groups of five in a small group. That placement's going to happen randomly. So in week one, one of the important things to do would be to find your small group, uh, to look at the small group discussion board. Um, each of you will be assigned to a small group discussion board, and that means only the five of you who are in your group will be able to see what the postings are in that discussion board. Um, and you'll be asked to post within that small group discussion board. Typically, almost every week, you'll have something to do in that small group discussion board. And you'll also be, at times, required to post in the large group discussion board. And that's where you have um, the whole class participating. Only on a few occasions will, will you be uh, participating as a, a group of individuals, a whole bunch of individuals, all posting to the large group discussion board. Week one is an example where you'll post both to the large group discussion board and to the small group discussion board just to warm up, to start to get a sense of where everything is located in Blackboard. But otherwise, you will typically be working in your small group discussion board and then five times in the term, the leader for that week in your small group will synthesize or summarize everybody's thoughts and ideas and the work that they've done to answer the posting for that week. And that leader will post your group's response in the large group discussion board. So we have 10 groups, each having five members, and five times in the term, there will be group responses in that large group discussion board. So there'll be five, uh, 10 postings, 10 postings, each representing a group of five. And you will each have one chance over the course of the term to be a leader and to do that group posting. As an individual, you would then go and respond to, to various other group postings. Um, but with, in terms of developing a posting, you will do that as a leader for your group of five. So how does the timing for the course work? Uh, the materials for the upcoming week are always going to be posted on Friday. This one's a little bit early, but typically they'll be posted on Friday for the upcoming week. And they'll include a combination of video lectures like this one where you'll get a link and you can uh, watch the lecture and maybe text-based materials or some kind of interactive thing to do. Um, and the discussion topic will also be posted at that time. And sometimes students want, to po want me to post all the discussion topics for the whole term so they can start working ahead. The problem is that topics uh, flow week by week and build on previous uh, learning and previous discussion. So the topics are only posted week by week and the materials uh, that my video lectures will be posted week by week, but you have an opportunity to read ahead in the textbook if you'd like to do that, by all means go ahead. And those uh, readings are included in the syllabus that's posted in the course website. Um, the weeks where there will be those uh, large group postings by the leaders of the small groups are weeks four, five, six, eight, and nine. And week one and week two will uh, really get you thinking about within your own group, what are the topics for those weeks, just the, from the syllabus, and 
what week you might want to negotiate with your small group to be the leader for. So four, five, six, eight, and nine, those are the weeks where you will rotate through being a group leader to come up with that summary posting based on the topic. And then you'll also be um, just doing individual substantive responses. So in the, let's say uh, week four, you were a follower and another member of your group um, posted on behalf of your entire group, you would still have the responsibility to go and look at the other group posting and respond uh, substantively to them. So how do you get in touch with me? Um, that's me, Sue Coffey. I, am, uh, I have a PhD in nursing. Um, I am a professor at UOIT, so you can find me at sue.coffey at uoit.ca. And if you put HLSC 3601 in the subject line, I will really pay attention to that. So I will do my very best to get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, it's, you can write to me in Blackboard, but I'm, I, I just think it's much easier to get me on my regular email. I may not be checking Blackboard in the evenings or at other times. So I much prefer if you write to me at my regular UIT email, but I will try to watch for everything. I am very happy to set up phone calls or video conferencing with you at any time that you would find helpful. So please just let me know. I would be very happy to talk to you about anything that you would find helpful in the, as we move through the course. We also have a teaching assistant, Yasaman Mirdamadi, and um, Yasaman will be providing some feedback, some responses to your um, postings as well as some other things. So I, I hope that we'll all have a, a great and enriching learning experience together. I will do my very best to get back to you as promptly as I can, and usually that means within at, at the, long, the longest two business days. Um, Please, if I'm not getting back to you within those two business days, just please write me again, just in case I've lost your message. I will do my very best, um, but don't hesitate to write me again if it should happen that I haven't got back to you yet. And just a note that if anything happens, just anything unexpected happens, let's say you've got a posting due and something has come up and you're worried about a deadline or something else, and you're waiting for me to get back to you, and that can feel very stressful. Can you, I, so recognize how busy and complicated your lives are and how stressful that can be waiting for someone to get back to you. And so I'm just hoping that you would be able to trust that whatever it is, we will find a way to sort it out. So in the meantime, while you are waiting for me to get back to you, please know that I will do my very best to get back to you as promptly as I can, but we will sort it out. We will sort out what's going on and, and find a good solution together. So for week one, remember I said we're taking a long runway and a very importantly, a lengthy start before we get into the content because the process of this course is figuring out how these things are going to work, how the small groups are going to work, what is the large group form going to look like is important. So for week one, you're going to find your small group. Uh, remember, that's a group of five that you've been placed in and see how that small group discussion forum works. You're going to see how the large group discussion forum works because week one is one of those unusual weeks where you'll post in both the large group and the small group just to become familiar. Um, you're going to respond to some questions within your small group and within the larger group, we'll, you'll respond to some broader questions. Um, I want you to find the course syllabus and the description of the assignments and really take a good look in case you have any questions. Uh, what I'll do is see over the course of the first week if people are asking any questions, if I can provide any greater clarification and I will continue to do that in these Zoom lectures. And you're going to start to get to know each other and feel comfortable with each other and start to get your heads around the idea of which week might each of you like to be the leader in um, posting for your small group because uh, by week two it would be helpful to begin to have a real good idea of what week you're going to be taking that leadership role so that you can mentally prepare for that and that's it for week one uh, really a uh, house a lot of housekeeping beginning to talk about how the course is going to work and as we move into next week into week two we're really going to hit the ground running talking about interprofessional practice what it is uh, the foundations for it uh, where we find ourselves in canada and healthcare right now I really look forward to the next uh, many weeks with you over the course of this term. I hope this is a great learning experience for you and I promise to do my very best in bringing all that I have and um, please stay in touch. Let me know how I can be helpful over the course of the term and, um, and I'll meet you here next week.